developer for almost a year, year plus. So I just want to share um, this platform that I've been using for, for the past few years. Um, okay. So <clears throat> this is Ross. You can see it's been powering like some of the state-of-the-art robots uh, at the moment. So we have uh, the Valkyrie from NASA, um, the UBO from the DARPA Robotic Challenge, who just won. They're using Ross as well. Um, we have Air, Land, and Sea. So Air from DJI. We have uh, Husky from Clearpath Robotics and uh, Kingfisher. So you realize these are all very expensive robots. And as a beginner, so I have no money to, to buy all these robots. And find that uh, ROS has been I think, a very useful tool and powerful tool with the open source community. I think it can do a lot of things. So the idea was to build uh, something I can afford and as well as to you know, run ROS. So, <clears throat> so people are asking me, why, why do you want to build a robot, right? Um, you have Gazebo, you, know, you can do a software, you have Bad Lab, right? And there's uh, somehow entry level robot, which is a turtle bot, right? But turtle bot is still too expensive for me, right? And I don't know how I move forward. Uh, let's say I spend 1500 for robot, and I don't know how it's going to be like. Uh, what's next after that, right? So maybe I spend a couple of hundreds, maybe still not bad. And of course, uh, so that's why I came with Lino Robot. So it's been uh, running for a year. So I it started with a two-wheel drive. Um, now I have uh, four supported platforms, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, uh, Acumen steering, uh, and mechanical drive. So all these platforms support, uh, supports end-to-end, -end, as in end-to-end -end means from the ground, and uh, to, all the way to the autonomous mode. So right now I'll be focusing on a uh, mechanical robot, right? Um, so why build one, right? So just what I mentioned, low-cost version, and of course for learning. So for those people who want to learn from hardware's perspective, right? Um, and uh, for you know, Turtlebot has done a uh, very well done, uh, good job. And some of the packages are very transparent for the users. So, like for example, your transforms. When I was learning from Turtlebot, right? Some of the transforms. Why is transform? Right. So, some of the things are very attracted to the user. So, building your own robot will actually expose all these things to you. And of course, um, why in the future you want to build your own robot, right? Um, and of course, for custom applications. So here are some of the examples, like a uh, self-driving wheelchair, um, NASA sample return challenge robots. So these are robots that uh, require the custom hardware. And this autonomous scooter from NUS, from Smart Labs, uh, Dr. William and uh, Dr. Marcelo. So I will walk you through the whole setup. So this is going to be a high level talk, right? Um, so I'm just going to walk you through on what's inside the portal. Okay, so um, we are getting started, base controller, odometry, laser sensor. So I section it part by part so the user can actually learn step by step. So the getting started will actually give you to UDAV rules. So the microcontrollers, um, your network setup, of course your ROS installation. This is a couple of bash scripts to automate your, your installation part. And your ROS packages installation and your platform I.O. Later I will have a few demos so you all can actually realize what I'm talking about here. Uh, here. So the hardware, like I mentioned, it should be low cost, right? So a couple of our chassis that I've been looking at. So I have this Ikea box. Uh, some plastic enclosure and thin storage box. So when I was building the platform, I wanted to share it to the community. So it should be something that be easily accessible to the people, right? Not just in Singapore, but in the US or Korea or whoever want to build a robot. So these are a few common chassis that uh, I was looking at. So the hardware parts list. So um, if you look at a robot base, right, it will roughly cost you two hundred seventy-five dollars, um, including your dev boards and lidar. $360, so total cost will be $635. Right, still cheaper than total one. Um, plus your sensors and your LiDAR are all there. So, so just a couple of wiring. Um, I'm using an XB11 LiDAR. Um, initially, I was using a Reserac Pro, which is around $120. Tinsy um, for motor controls. Um, some cheap motor drivers. 
And uh, inside the tutorial, right, will be you will have your schematic diagrams also. So for all the supported platforms, uh, for the two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, you have all these uh, schematic diagrams. So the kinematics part. So I also open source a library for kinematics. So as you can see for navigation stack, right, um, the way you make it standardized for all the robot platforms is that it uses this topic command bell, right, and uh, using geometry messages with so irregardless of the platform you're using, for example, now you're on your research, you're using this platform. Um, in the future, you change your four-wheel drive. Um, you still be able to use your software, irregardless of what platform, because of this standardization, right? So in the microcontroller itself, um, you have a speed parser, which actually grabs um, the velocity required by the navigation stack. So for example, um, the intelligence says that, hey, you need to move straight. So it will just send to the microcontroller that, hey, you need to move at 0.5 meters per second straight. So the microcontroller will pass it, goes to a PID controller, um, and goes to my kinematics uh, library, uh, which I open source. So, so here's the documentation uh, written. So how the library works is, is pretty simple. For example, you're using a PC Moto. Uh, you just need to define your maximum RPM, your wheel diameter, and the number of bits of the PWM that you're using, and like how, how, uh, yeah, how fat is the robot. Okay, and then the way you get its velocities is, uh, so I have this function here <coughs> called get PWM function where from the navigation stack it just gets the, the required velocity and it would speed all the PWM values to the motor. So inside inside the package also in, in, uh, includes a PID configurator. So for example you uh, of course, you're building some uh, different types of motor, right? So it might require to, to configure using your own PID. So we have a I created a visualizer for you to actually see what's happening on your motors and how it reacts to your PID constants. So these motors work with the PWM, right? Yes. So how it works is uh, from the from the encoders versus the required uh, velocity, then it speeds up the required PWM value to speed up the motor. So you send the same PWM to all the motors. Uh, yes, yes. But the, the kinematics library would actually calculate automatically for you based on the um, navigation stacks required philosophy. Okay, and then uh, part of the tutorial also is this odometry track. So these are just make, making sure that your odometry is in the is in correct mode. So for example, for linear velocity, for example, on one grid by right, um, the, your physical robot must actually displace one meter. So from what the robot takes, and where the physical robot is, you need to check on that. Actually, it will, it will all be on the tutorials. And another thing to check is your LiDAR. Uh, just to check whether your sensor driver is working. Uh, this is all in RVs. And your transforms. Later, I'll show you that how, how you will be able to configure your transforms. So this is very important, especially when you're building your own robot. Right? Um, some of you might be placing your sensor be at the bottom or at the top of the robot. So this is very uh, important. And of course, your mapping. Um, for autonomous board, uh, it's, this is very important thing. So using the LiDAR um, seen on the top, they're able to map the environment that you are trying to navigate. So on the left side is a sample of the first map that I have created. So it's a pretty bad odometry. So that was, that's why the map is pretty screwed up. Uh, a, a, a few fine tuning. Uh, is the best so-called optimized results that I've done, and uh, your of course your autonomous navigation. So for global planner, I'm using all the default uh, settings provided by Ross. Uh, for global planner, I'm using Nav FN. Uh, for local planner, the trajectory planner, and for localization, I'm using AMCL. Yeah, all the packages are there. Later, I will show you all the slides. C++ 
since I can't demo uh, live at the moment because I haven't mapped the whole place, uh, this is just a short video that I have recorded before. So this is an EK box, yeah. And a few more applications. So I put a cut, uh, put a cut on top, and I went, I went to the mall just to see how it works in public. from our total bot, it's just using a, a Kinect, then uh, yeah, from the depth itself, then you just follow from the, yeah. so it calculates how, how far is it. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah. Uh, how do you calculate your elementary? Do you use the uh, view or not? Uh, because in your video, I saw the view is hitting on the floor. Right. Oh, I mean for for the follow me, it's uh, just constantly calculating the... Uh, because not the, the one you throw the box. Uh, well, I saw the thing is on the floor. Right. So, uh, so, so, so far, uh, I mean, based on the on the test, it, it works well. I think AM still has done a good job on uh, localizing the robot as well. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, yeah. What do you use? Uh, what what do you use? Sorry. Uh, what? Oh, um, for for that application, I was using a <laughs> Razer Rock. But right now, I'm using a TK1. Later, you all can have a look on uh, what's inside the robot. What's inside a package? Can you increase the sorry the font. Okay. Increase the font. No. Uh, bigger. It's still very small. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <coughs> okay. So these are some. These are what's inside the package. So you have uh, the Arduino codes inside. You have the launch files, the parameters for your autonomous navigation, and your your Avis uh, settings, and for your 
What's inside the SRC is your dormitory codes. So let's uh, try to run the robot. Mm. It's free, so I'm on SSH at the moment. So the, the first launch part is a bring up launch. So from here, Show you some of the mapping packages. But I'm using a, I'm using G-mapping package, which is a standard a package for um, ROS as well. It comes default by uh, by ROS. Uh, and all the RV settings are there also. So you once you download the package, uh, all the RV settings are there. So you don't need to actually create. You don't need to add all these uh, parameters. So everything is uh, added up for you all. What? Uh, this is a map uh, in our lab. No matter if it works. Let's say it's great a fake post. So I'm using AMC here for local SMS service. As you can see here, all the particles are, are being scattered, looking, trying to figure out where's the exact location of the robot.